What really makes us better people is our capacity to question the status quo to achieve positive change. If you are seeking to adopt new habits, to learn about a kind lifestyle, low waste living and speaking up for justice, you have come to the right place. Together, we will make the switch that will light up this world. I'm Morgan and I'm happy to welcome you on this journey. Okay, beautiful souls, ready for this new episode. Uh, today I'm bringing you two quite, um, yeah, like everyday basis topics. Um, those two topics can become quite important in someone's life or not at all important. And without further ado, these two topics are money and minimalism. I just wanted to bring you um, an insight, an insight into my different experiences, like my everyday, yeah, like how I deal with those uh, two topics. How are they present in my life, and what used to be my perspective on those two topics? And yeah, so uh, first to to bring some, yeah, some some matter to this uh, episode I just want to provide to provide you with the definition of the both uh, notions so we have money and minimalism so money and I took both definitions from the website Miriam Webster which is an online uh, English dictionary so money is something that is generally accepted as a medium of exchange a measure of value or a means of payment. And then we have minimalism, a style or technique, as in music, literature or design, that is characterized by extreme spareness and simplicity. So, what's, uh, what's with me? What's, what's with money and what's with minimalism? Um, so money, I think it was never like like a huge um yeah prevailing topic in my life it was never a like a, a topic that's hard to deal with um but i had some some uh preconceptions about money um i was very often envious of people who would have uh, who had a lot of money because i thought you know they have it all and they have a good job, so I have lots of money, so they can buy, so they can buy lots and lots of things, and so I thought in in a way that it defines success and happiness. So my like my mental uh, image was like, you need a lot of money if you want to be happy, because when you have a lot of money, you can buy a lot of things. And then you can be happy. So money, then owning, so possession of things, and that makes you happy. That's like my kind of a close mindset that I kind of had before. And of course, yeah, whenever I witness uh, an ambulance or uh, firefighters that go by, I think to myself, I'm glad I'm not in there, like I'm thankful I'm not in there and at the same time I I hope the person or persons who are in there um, yeah, are going to be okay. So every time you see an ambulance, firefighters, just give a little prayer to the person or persons who are hanging in there. Um, yeah, so that was my view about money. Uh, earlier in my life more when I was like in my teenage um, years and then my thoughts about minimalism were like it's kind of extreme and it's just you know for spiritual hippie people or some weird architects with empty houses with white kitchens that was my yeah 
my visualization of minimalism min- minimalism um and now this has changed uh i would say both um my views about minimalism and money have greatly changed um i think first like about minimalism i think my view has changed because it's become really important in my life now and that's in my eyes it's only because i went vegan and then after making this step it just opened so many different doors and brought so many opportunities in my life that guided me toward minimalism and it, i think it was a must for me so that i could realize yeah so that i could really reflect upon maybe some existential questions or reflect upon some of my uh, misconceptions that i used to have and yeah that's the same case uh for money i now i view it more like something that helps me reach some of my goals um of course i i'm convinced that you don't need money to fulfill all of your dreams or to achieve uh, all of your goals in life it certainly helps you especially if you have um well i guess kind of materialistic material dreams uh if your dream i don't know is to own a huge house well you're gonna have to spend some money because uh, it's just how it is um and you know it's not it's not bad like i cannot tell that someone who wants to have a big house is bad it's it's their choice but i know that they're going to have to deal with the consequences and and that's something that you shouldn't take lightly because you might have regrets later especially if you have to take a loan and you know if you have to end up just just paying up paying your whole life for a huge house which you probably barely even live in because you're so busy with your job then what's the point um but if if that's one of your dreams then just go for it um now i also view money as a way of supporting a company uh, with ethical values with values that align with mine so you know whenever i can um, the rare times where i actually buy something new uh, if that's something i cannot avoid because at this time uh, and i've been already doing it for some years um I'm more living with this um, concept of, I think Greta Thunberg names it um, stop shop, which means that you only buy uh, new things, brand new things, if that's something you cannot avoid and which you cannot find maybe um, secondhand. And yeah, so when I do have to make a purchase, that's going to involve that something has to be made out of you know from scratch and then it's resources then i want to be sure that i'm financing the kind the good kind of company the good kind of people um of course has to be vegan um if it's uh if it's skincare of that kind of thing but i don't buy um this kind of products um yeah but first that that's one of like the criteria then i want to make sure that it's sustainable uh and let me just give you for example um give you for the example the example of uh protein powder it's not it's definitely not something that i really need but i enjoy it as a way to you know to help me build muscle um in my practice and i also enjoy the taste of it and thanks to mark my boyfriend i came across vivo life and that's just a brand that like they they fill all all my different criteria they're sustainable their packaging is compostable 
uh, all their products are vegan. There are people with just like such a big heart and they always like make you um, stay like, um, how could I say that? They always want you to reflect upon why you're buying something and um, for example for Black Friday I think they called it Green Friday or something last year and they told people you know don't buy our products on this Black Friday if you don't need any and I think they didn't they only had some sales in there or, or they didn't have anything on sale. I don't know, but it was like the message was like, you know, buy something if you really need it, if it's meaningful for you, otherwise don't. And and think about your impact, think about your footprint with every purchase choice that you make. And that was a powerful message. And not many companies do that because the goal, uh, as always, is just to produce more, to sell more and to make more money. Um. So yes, whenever I do make a, a purchase that involves a, a brand new um, object, I just I want to make sure that it's that kind of company. Um, money for me is also um, well something that enables me to live some magical experiences, like marking experiences that I would not be able to live if I didn't have the money um, and by that I mean I'm not saying it's something you're doing like every month that's the point it's just like some really marking like life experiences such as great concerts some kind of um, events that really like provoke a lot of emotions in you and that might help you um, you know to to move on as a person just this kind of things that do you good like going to um the therm thermal i don't know how it's called in english like a thermal station I've, in french that's how we say it where you have like a whirlpool and you have some saunas and hammam and like the kind of places where you really really take care of yourself and it's not something that I'm necessarily willing to do every week. But if I could, I would just do it like one once a month or once every two months, maybe. And because I think that's something that's worth investing money in. Because it's it's your temple, it's the way you treat yourself and it's getting rid of the stress. And, and it's also... A day where you really get to to relax with some of your beloved ones and yeah I just love going to this um, to this thermal station with my boyfriend and I know that every time we go in such such a kind of place then it's it's always a very emotional experience for us and when we look back we're just so happy um, that we went there and yeah so that kind of things or, or like concerts you know when you have an artist that you've been dreaming of um, for such a long time and you just know that their music is something that triggers something like in your guts like you can feel you can resonate with their music if you know that's that's something that makes you vibrate then just go for it and you don't have to be ashamed of putting a lot of money in it because if you see it as an experience that's fulfilling you that's like nourishing you then you should just do it and you know I think in life um, people have kind of lost the true value of things like they've lost the sense of value they they evaluate like they estimate objects of as having so much value and they totally forget that the most simple moments or the most simple things can have such a great value 
they put so much value in in houses like i said in having uh, so much furniture but they forget like how maybe sharing an evening with someone at a concert can just like you know tighten their bond a bit more or uh, going like i said to this kind of place where where you relax with someone that's something that's going to really to bring more value to you it's gonna add more value so it's not like you're just giving you're just throwing money at the window it's more like you're making an, an investment but this investment at the same time is going to, to nourish you back and that's why i'm i'm telling you you know if you if you have this sense of value and you just don't just um accumulate stuff that don't have a meaning to you then then do it do do what really yeah what really nurtures you um then uh, money is also a great way sometimes to help people travel um as for me i'm i don't think i'm a person who would uh, just do europe all by bike um i would certainly not take um flights anymore but I would take a, a car or a, um, a train and or a bus, like a flex bus. Like I would first look for the most environmental friendly ability that I have. Um, and that still includes a bit of, co uh, of comfort. And then I would just explore where I live now, where I live in Germany or I would explore Europe. And that's something that money can enable enable me. It's also to um, it helps me to have access to some foods that align with my values, such as uh, low waste shops. Yeah, like most of the foods we have, which are fresh, we get them for food sharing, so we don't have to pay for them. But when I have to pay for foods, then I want to have some good quality foods and. I want to make sure that I reduce my my waste as much as possible. So I would go into um, low waste shops. Then, um, well, how I view minimalism. Now I would simply define it like this. It's a meaningful way of living that allows me to live, experience and own only what has a value and sparks joy in my eyes um so in the 45th episode of this podcast i've talked about the conmary method um she uh so marie kondo is a japanese author and her book is called the magic of tidying up and this book really it, it triggered the, the beginning of my journey with minimalism and now it's something that's necessary for me to question myself on on a daily basis to question my my possession of things if the things that i own really still do have a meaning and a role to play in my life and if it's not the case then i have to discard them in some way either first by finding someone that might enjoy those objects so or you can exchange your objects with other people, other people's uh, possessions. Uh, find a way to recycle. If the first is not possible, find a way to upcycle. Maybe give a second use to those objects. Um, and then, yeah, I I just really want to be sure when I look at the things around me in my apartment that you know they are there for a reason, and I chose them for a reason. Um, and then when it comes to buying minimally or buying minimalistically, no, minimally, I think, um, yeah, I always secondhand shop. Like I said, if I really don't have a choice, I would do what's called stop shop, but otherwise, otherwise I buy my clothes secondhand, even the electronic stuff here, uh, what we use with Mark uh, is everything secondhand. And minimalism for me is also about being more aware and conscious about my 
footprint, my impact uh, on the environment and not contributing to this mass consumption, which for me, mass consumption, it doesn't mean anything to me anymore. I, I don't want to be part of it. Sorry. All right. E, sorry, got interrupted. Um, yeah, so I've talked about the KonMari method uh, in my 45th episode. Mari Kondo is a Japanese author. She wrote the probably a bestseller um, book, The Magic of Tidying Up. And she explains like um, how you can go through your house and really discard things that don't bring joy in your life anymore. And that's really, um, I think it's an important stage, like step in your life so that from that point on, then you you start seeing, considering like, like broadening <laughs> your circle of um yeah of minimalism i would say and and you start applying this method to different aspects of your life and then you think about like do all my relationships bring meaning to my life um are all the people i'm in contact with or in relationship with do they all bring me love and respect? Do they do I matter to them and do they matter to me? It's it just like triggers this this thinking um and yeah when when you start visualizing your life from that perspective then it I think it really allows you to to see clearer definitely because then when you one by one when you reduce your facebook friend list or when you just get rid of some contacts um yeah that don't mean as much as before uh then you start also clearing your mind and i think that's also yeah that's definitely a a big um aspect of minimalism it clears up your mind it's it clears up your soul, uh, it clears up your apartment and yeah, I will definitely make like an an episode in the coming weeks um, on our new apartment, probably will make a video about our new apartment uh, in on our YouTube channel called Eat the Rainbow, maybe on the positive switch as well and yeah, just explaining you guys like what was our decision process like when it came to buying new stuff that we didn't have like chairs and table and desk and yeah and all the new things even the things that we used to uh, film with and to create content for you so if you're interested just stay tuned i think that will be everything about minimalism and money today please just get in touch with me just let me know like what is your view on money and minimalism or how did it how did it evolve through the years what is your uh, mindset uh, like now regarding money and minimalism and yes i think that's uh, we're going that's how we're going to close up now uh, thank you for showing up thank you for being for paying attention to what i have to say to the few words i have to give uh, to try and make this world a little bit better and i will see you in the next one bye bye